So uh, my name is Amadeo. Um, I'm here to talk a little bit about symmetry. Um, this is a program I've been developing for a number of years. Um, been kind of a little bit of an obsession of mine. Um, I, I consider it more of an art project than a uh, um, than a like a proper business right now. But I'm trying to figure out right, tr trying to transition into a business. And so um, I'll show it to a little. I'll talk about it a little bit for a few minutes, and then we'll uh, get into doing a live demo, which I think it, I'll go over the features and all that stuff. And, We'll do something funny or something fun. We'll figure it out. Um, so uh, basically, uh, what is symmetry is the, the first question. Um, so I, I, the tagline I have for it is it's a virtual playground, an interactive art builder. Um, that's kind of a hoity-toity kind of way of just saying a little bit like a game maker tool, kind of like a Unity, um, but much simpler. Um, and with a heavy focus on playing and, and trying different things. Um, and when I talk about interactive art, I mean, of course, you know, video games, music videos, VR experiences, um, visualizations, demos, and presentations too. Um, anything that uses a screen, really. And uh, and the other thing is, like, you get into this notion of uh, practical art versus abstract art. And um, I think applying art to all sorts of things, like data visualization and and, and other things like that, I think is an important thing uh, to help visualize problems. And, and so the idea of a program that enables people to do that in an easier way uh, is very appealing to me personally. Um, so what are the motivations behind this? Um, the main idea is to really simplify kind of the builder concept, the game builder concept. Um, Unity and uh, Unreal are really cool programs. You can pretty much do whatever you want with those programs, but they kind of are so complicated. They require almost a CS degree to use some of them. Um, and if you're just trying to do something simple or something quick, uh, like a music video or something, you might not want to invest that much time to do that kind of thing. So the, the focus is really on a faster learning curve, I think. And um, things should just work. You know, if you create something, you should expect it to kind of behave in the way you'd expect it to. Oh, I created, you know, I've played with this object and it does exactly what I want to do. Um, which is actually a really tricky problem from user inter interface standpoint. It's, you know, it's not easy when you have lots of, you know, 3D in general is just a space and then there's like, you know, a million different properties that can change things and affect things, and so that's easier said than done. And uh, um, I've attempted to do as well as I can, but um, inevitably there's going to be a learning curve even in this program. And I think personally, experimentation is really at the heart of good design. Um, any kind of art, I think, starts by playing. Um, musicians do this all the time. They start with maybe a rhythm, and then they layer on additional things like a melody or, or whatnot. Um, so I think applying that to interactive spaces and making video games is, is very important, I think, to discover what works and what doesn't. And now the whole virtual reality thing, um, you know, what, what kind of things, you know, make you nauseous, you know, when the camera moves, you know, if it moves backwards, it makes you nauseous. If it moves up or downwards, it makes you nauseous. If it moves forward, it doesn't. So what are those things that work and what, and don't work? And, and to discover those, you need something that kind of allows you to just try different things. And I think it's fun uh, playing around with the kind of, these kind of things. And the other big motivation is making non-game concepts like music videos and, and demos, which is really the, the initial reason I wrote this program. Um, it started off as kind of a music video maker tool, um, and then it kind of went from there. So that's the main thing, really. Not, not too much else to talk about. Um, what I'll do is we'll just go into a live demo. Um, I'm going to play around with the program a little bit, and um, then we'll start to lay around more stuff. Again, this is just kind of on the, on the moment here. I haven't really, like, pre I have a rough script of things to do, but you know, the whole idea is just to, to, to follow our nose, and, and if we see something that's interesting, we'll go in that direction. And that's really the, the spirit of the program. OK, so let's take a look. simple way here, but this presentation was actually done in symmetry, so it actually is just part of the, the space here, so we're going to just transition right to the editor. So the UI is designed to be kind of this full screen immersive thing, um, where you basically are in, in the space at all times, so you don't have like a sub window with like over, non overlapping windows, which can be good in some sense, you don't have to like constantly deal with managing windows that are over things, but in, in my, for whatever reason, I like being in the space, I like kind of playing in the world. So right now, the, the, the play button is pushed, so we're kind of in real time right now. So let's just play with some simple shapes here. This is just a, a simple box here. Um, and so physics is, is enabled, so we can just start to play with it. If anybody's familiar with the Photoshop keys, like Alt to copy and stuff like that, would find themselves at home here. Um, you know, we can just start to like, you know, just mess around here, because why not? So I just stop time here. So we can move around. The camera will collide with these objects. Um, so we're going to slow down time now. So there's a whole universe model at the root. And you can make subspaces that represent kind of like sub, uh, uh, like almost like a multi-universe. Um, but I mean, it's again very. I mean, at the end, it's just an abstraction of straightforward concepts. But 
it's easy, it's fun to think of it in that way because I think it's intuitive. Like, okay, I go to the root universe and now I slow down time at the root. Now everything's affected, not, not just this space. If you created other spaces, they would also be affected. If you're inside a space, you can alter that timeline. It will be affected only within that subspace. Um, but, so here we go, just, this is simple and we can just like start to mess around. I'll grab that and throw it in the other direction there. Um, no. So we can just select and delete it, it's not goodbye. I don't have to deal with that anymore. Um, and let's enable depth of field, that always looks nice. So, um, so it's just again, you just play with properties here. The camera tab will, will access the camera we're looking through. So we enable the lens model, now we have some, some depth of field. We can click to focus when we activate the, the uh, controller on the right, right click to move the mouse. And we just click to focus, kind of like a, like a camera. Um, so now let's, let's add some, maybe some post-process effects. So we have a viewport, and the viewport are basically layers, and each layer is a composition. So we have like uh, one layer represents rendering a space, another layer could be the exposure layer to do, you know, bring those values down from a high dynamic range into the screen values. Um, and then this is where we can add a, an image processing layer, let's say. So we're gonna add like, a, I know, some, some gradient map here. And actually, we're gonna put that on top of the exposure layer, so it's applied on top of the exposure. Now the cool thing also about symmetry is that any value you see here can be automated and changed um, via script or via a signal. So in this case, um, if we go to the image filter layer, the gradient map, here are all the colors we can play with. We can actually split this out into its components by attaching an attribute to that. Um, and then we have access to the hue, for instance. And so now we can, we can attach a signal to this um, to adjust this with the current timeline, the universe timeline. We're gonna attach a waveform signal here. And now uh, um, we'll adjust the, um, the amplitude of this signal, and now we have this automatic managed um, signal. Let's just knock down the wavelength here. Oh, because I slow down time, sorry. We can speed up time. There we go. So this is simple, right? Just like a weird color thing here. Um, but, so that already right there we have just something simple to play with in two seconds. We can just, you know, alter these colors and just do the hell we want here. Let's see if we can find something weird here. We can make it, you know, over bright or something. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Okay. So now let's, let's create a simple character. Um, I'm gonna turn that layer off for now. Um, let's, let's build a really simple character, a, a simple rolling ball character. Um, we're gonna start, just, I'm just gonna make a little platform for it. Um, I'm gonna hit stop here so that we're not, physics doesn't apply in real time. I'm gonna build, and this thing's out of focus, so let's just let's focus in on that. I'm gonna make some copies of this, we'll make a little, little stack for this thing. Yeah. Okay, so let's put our little, our little ball on top of this thing. This will be our little rolly ball that will control. So again, so all we have to do is play with properties right now. We have a simple sphere, and we're gonna adjust this sphere now. We're gonna attach an object character to that. So if you use Unity, I think components is what Unity does. I call them attributes. Um, basically, it's a filter graph of, of a functionality that's attached at a root. Um, and then on the object character, we're gonna attach an object player controller, which now is gonna allow us to control it. So if I right click on it and set it as a player node, now we have a little playable object here that we can now mess around with. Um, so now we're gonna attach to the camera a tracking player controller. Now it'll, it'll keep watching it. Um, and we'll add like auto focus to it and auto zoom so that we can kind of, as it moves away, it will keep it in focus. And now if we want, let the ball is kind of now being restricted a bit because its mass is low. Let's just adjust the mass in real time here. Uh, let's crank it up here. Now it should be able to plow through these things a little bit better. Maybe we'll crank up its power. That's more fun here. It'll get kind of ridiculous if we do it really high. Sphere. There we go. So now it's like crazy sphere. So we can also adjust its sphere here. The sphere has lost its mind. Um, let's see. So mesh model. We're going to adjust the shape here, and we're going to make it bigger. <laughs> Oops. Oop, and then it got too small. And then we can make copies of it. So at any moment we can just make copies. Because why not? And if you right click again, we'll set this to player node. They're all instant, so they all share the same properties. So since we made these playable characters. Now we can get that one over there, now we'll look over there, and now we can control this one. Um, so let's add our filters back here, so we have this wacky thing now. Um, okay, so let's keep playing here. So uh, at the same time, we, we can, oh, so the other thing that's big for video games is doing things like, um, you know, you want the standard, like, chaser camera, so we, we attach, we change the tracking controller to an orbit player controller, and it's way too zoomed in right now. See, these are the kind of things that make it unintuitive sometimes. Okay, there we go. So now it's going to chase it like a video game, so it's a little bit more of a, an entire focus now. So let's get it into focus. There we go. So now this is a little bit more classic. Um, so now let's let's start playing. I'm going to turn off the character controllers. So that's going to go off on its own now. 
we can kind of now start to play with like the terrain, for instance. Terrain's always fun. So we just start doing something here. Um, maybe we'll stick the sphere at the top of that, that, that hill there. That's always kind of fun. Um, let's flatten it out. up here. Oops, I see it still has velocity, so there's actually a way you can clear out the velocity, sorry. That's kind of ridiculous. Okay, so now if we want to get really nauseous here, we'll, we'll uh, change the camera view to a first person view and we'll roll down the hill, or whatever. <laughs> um, so now we'll activate the player controller and roll down the hill. Uh, that's kind of, so this is fun, so at any moment we can switch, <laughs> yeah. It's really, really exciting. <laughs> So the, the cool thing is that this works great with the Oculus Rift too. So at any moment you can switch. I don't have it attached, but you can just switch to the Oculus Rift. So you can test things out really quickly um, and, and play with these things. So the camera now is weird. So we're going to get rid of this player controller, the, the first person view thing, and we're going to reset the camera. Okay, good. All right, so we have a little playable controller. Let's, let's play with some materials here since these are pretty boring things here. So um, let's create a new material here. So this, this here is the browser. This is our internal representation of our library. We have access to all of our internal states, like textures, materials, all that stuff is internal. It doesn't have a spatial component. Then the space tab allows us to get the analogs to all the objects in the scene in, in a thumbnail here that we can actually create copies and, and drag and drop to from here and make additional objects from there. Um, but anyway, so let's go to the library now. Let's create a new material for this thing. Um, attach it to this. So they're all instant, so they all show that material. And we can make this shiny. So we'll take a look at the material editing here. Um, so for instance, you know, changing the colors, pretty basic stuff. There's diffuse maps, detailed diffuse maps, translucency, refraction capacity maps, specular maps, classroom maps, all the standard, all your favorites are there. Um, so let's do, um, let me get rid of, so there's a little annoying thing here that um, if you do a real time reflection, it's going to try to apply it to all of them, so let's just get them down to just one for now. Okay. The other one's somewhere around there, other there. Okay. All right, so let's make this nice and shiny. Shiny things always look nice. I don't know why. It's like, I think we're like, humans are designed to enjoy shiny things. So it's like weird. A Apple really took that off for a while. They enjoyed putting the little glares and everything. All right. So here we have a nice little reflection. This is kind of cool because if we attach a, um, for instance, if we, it's neat. And, and if you turn on the Oculus Rift, it's kind of cool when you see the reflection front. It's almost like a, if it chases it, it's kind of interesting. But anyways, that, that's an example of something you can do with the material system. The other cool thing is, again, with the instancing system, let me just go back to just making copies of this. Um, so if we make any changes to this, for instance, like if we, we subdivide it, now we have these like weird, um, we can apply like, you know, yeah, prisms or whatever. But, but it's fun because it applies, even the boxes, let's select the box and just change the shapes here. That's kind of neat. Um, a little choppy because I guess there's a lot of collision going on here. It will automatically stop if it ever gets over choppy, but that's not good. Come on. There we go. So it auto stopped it because it was taking too long. Okay. So anyways, it's fun. It, because I kind of over copied them, it maybe got a little goofy here. Um, let me just see if it actually plays, if it stabilizes. Because the way the physics engine, I'm using bullet for physics and it'll try to, over time, things will go to sleep if they don't move anymore. And so once that happens, it optimizes the kind of the, it only has to visit the objects that actually have motion to them. So now they're all sleeping, so it's, it's back to being fast. Um, so anyways, let, let's take a look at another modifier that we can attach to these things here, like a noise modifier here. We can make these weird distorted objects. Um, and again, we're, st we're still controlling these things. So if we, if we nah, you know what, I'm just going to start new here. That's the cool thing, is you just do that when you get bored. You just start new. Um, so let me, um, so I looked at the terrain here. Let's take a look at another really cool feature. Um, so one of the things I support is this thing called a lot system. And a lot is basically a subspace that can be streamed in and out. Um, and one of the things these lots can live, and they can live on a web server. So I have a, uh, I'm currently hosting a lot on symmetry.com. Um, I'm going to type in the URL here. Um, It's going to stream it in if I type it in right. No, I didn't put a backslash. No, they're loading lot. Oh, am I not connected to the internet? No, I'm not. Sorry, I think connected to the internet. Internet. Okay. So let's take a look at the lot now. Let's load this back here. No, they're not loading. Oh, 
that's a very useful error message. Uh, all right then. That's, oh, I did not type it in right. There we go. So this now just came from a web server um, that I had put together and then just hosting it there. So the idea is that you know people could create these lots and share them and, and then build you can build worlds of other people's lots, which is kind of interesting. And again, lots can contain anything you want inside them, like you know physics objects or scripting. Um, so let's take also a look at some scripting here too. Um, and then we'll start doing some stuff with music so that it gets a little bit more exciting here. Sorry, this is probably like a, a laundry list of things. I'm just trying to go over just to get a sense of what the program's like. So this is a trigger here. These are pretty well known. Just something that you can just write some code in. Um, and it's really nice because it's super easy to write some code to do something interesting. So let's say we have our, our, uh, like a simple object, uh, like the sphere here. And when it rolls in this thing, it calls that trigger. If we want it to say that to change, like go to nighttime uh, in this space here, it's super easy. All we have to do is find the object that we want to change, in this case, the planet, the night sky. This, will, will, this is our night. Um, all we have to do is drag and drop that right into our scripting engine. Um, and we have access to a little identifier that gives us the ability to just access its properties from right here. So we just say night sky is equal to true. So now when it goes through there, it will set it to night. Super easy. Um, so again, anytime you see a property, you can just drag and drop that in. You can start to work with it right away. You know, you don't have to jump through too many hoops. And so it allows you to just start to play with things really quickly. So here we have a nice little like night scene. Let's, um, let's actually switch to um, we have nice little sunsets too. Um, let's create a light source here. And, and let's make this really bright. And now we'll turn on some fog for some mood here. Some uh, atmospheric fog. And now we have our, our kind of our interesting so again, we, we just have, uh, quickly, we've just kind of played with something kind of interesting. Um, so let's now, let's, let's start to bring in some music here. So let's, let's kind of do an overlay here, and we'll look at some music visualization stuff too. So um, I'm going to create an audio layer here. I'm going to import this right onto the screen. The screen represents like 2D things that we placed on top of the screen. This is kind of good. Sorry, the song is really stupid. Now let's start building some sort of visualization. So I don't know, let's see if we play here. We'll do something with clouds. Yikes. Let's make copies of this. This one out. Uh, we can bring in uh, post process effects. Let's do an edge detector for instance. It's kind of weird. Uh, and yeah, we can automate any of these properties. We just play more access to the script that we're going to do. Songs can get really boring really fast. So let's get a little slayer here. So let's also let's go to the universe here. Let's add some kind of weird at the time. Let's take this feedback in here. It's probably not helping. Got it. I guess it doesn't make sense. Alright, so let's now attach the time scale of the universe. Let's create a Signal controller here. A new timeline. So if we have like a character here that we can play with, we also have like a So here's our audio editor. So this is also a timeline editing. So you can set up keyframes and do all that kind of stuff too. Um, this is, uh, let's, 
let's create a, some additional weird stuff there. Let's create a emitter. Let's take a little mint objects. Let's import an object that's interesting here. Yeah. Yeah. Let's bring in a car. And a support car. attach a physics body to this thing right now really quickly. I'm going to edit the physics layer. It pauses it automatically the sound, the sound so that doesn't... This is just a, a really rough approximation of its rigid body. Um, all right. That's good enough. Now we can make it movable. Let's access its rigid body and make it movable. Okay. Nice car. Back some uh, some light here, so we can actually see what's going on. There we go. Uh, oops. <laughs> Jeez, we'll just make more copies. Why not? So let's um, let's attach some of this stuff with. Uh, let's put a rope that connects these two cars together. That's what's going on. There we go. Uh, they're tethered together. Oops. Oops. Oh, that's weird. Oops. <laughs> There's always something funny to discover, like, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, like, there's something here that... But again, the important thing is that you can always just kind of play with stuff, you know, everything kind of works the way you expect it to. You can grab the rope or, like, attach a, um, get rid of this fog, this fog is annoying me. Let's see what okay, there we go. And this emitter is just like emitting a sphere to grab it. I remember creating that. That over here. So let's, let's emit cars instead. So we're going to select our sampler set. Let's, let's pick the car to, to emit that. Um, pick the car. There we go. It's now emitting cars. Let's add some velocity to the emitter here. Physics, initial velocity. Some flight. <laughs> That's weird. There we go. Um, what else? Um, which layer I did here? Uh, depth of field is turned off. I like depth of field. So, things are nicer. There we go. so they also start to disappear. I mean, it does manage a lot of that stuff automatically so that you don't obviously start creating an infinite number of cars. Um, a pile of cars here. Um, let's import something else here. Like, let's do a. Uh, Duck, plastic duck. Where's the duck? There we go. This is like a classic 3D object. Um, let, let's make this thing also move more. Let's add a rigid body to it. There we go. Oops. Let's see if we can add some funny some image layers here. Just a bizarre. Let's invert the scene. It's kind of weird. Do a sharpening effect. Oh, we can do uh, like visualizations too, like audio visualizations. Is what, what does that look like? Oh, that's kind of weird. Um, or if we do like a, we could zoom in and do like those roto zoom effects here. If we attach a transform to this. I told you I can get super music. That's weird. I'll downsample this. Oh, that's weird. So let's see what it looks like. We bring back. Oh, that's, that's really strange. Um, I told you I didn't. I didn't. Pre I didn't prepare for this. So <laughs> glad it's semi working out. Um, let me see what else. Let's get rid of this down center. Um, let's, uh, let's see what else. Here. So we can also easily create cameras and switch to different camera angles. This is gonna. We're, we exited the viewport in this case. So each viewport has the composition, so we're just going to switch back to that viewport any moment here. We can transition between the viewports, too. Um, let's also play with audio filters, too. That's right, we have some audio filter stuff here, too. So let's say we have this audio thing here. Let's support another audio. Um, this guy talking. Let's make that loop. Let's make that louder. Ready for 
around us all the time. We all know the atomic bomb was very so dangerous. Some filters to the, uh, used against us. The microphone. So there's a mic and speaker system too. So you can bring mics and speakers. And here's the microphone. Here's just, you can send it to another speaker in the space. So I spent a lot of time on audio in this program too. Does it start off as a music organization? So we have a DSP filters too. We are ready for many other dangers. It's not a low-pass filter, so we just have like the low. Oh, the high pass filter. Very dangerous. The Q file, you heard a quality value. In this case, it's the filter that has to be bad. We must get ready for it. We are ready for many other dangers around us all the time. It's kind of weird. I don't think this would be anything you'd ever produce. We must get ready for it. So, yeah, that's an error. Let me stop that. Sorry. No way. Okay. Move out to you. Okay. So it's the other cool thing here. Um, so yeah, the lobs are kind of cool. So we also have cloth here. So it's kind of fun. Just throw this up in the air. Uh, let's get rid of these filters. So we can just see what's going on. There's a piece of paper that's floating around there. Oh, those are cars. I lost it. Let's get rid of this screen space here. Maybe be used against us. We must get ready for it. Just as we are ready for many other dangers around us all the time. We all know the atomic bomb is very dangerous. Maybe be used against us. We must get ready for it. Just as we are ready for Cars are colliding. Maybe we can make a cape, like a, a fun, like uh, a cape on the car. Yeah, we should do that. Make it like a superhero car. We are ready for many other dangers. Let's make a copy of this over and destroy this one. We all know the atomic bomb is very dangerous. It may be used against this will work. We must get ready for it. Just as we are ready for many other dangers around us all the time. We all know the atomic bomb is very dangerous. Soft body repair and may be used against us. We must get ready for it. Just as we are ready for many other dangers around us all the time. So it's like a kicked car now. We all know the atomic bomb. Solving crime. Helping society. Although the cape has a lot of mass, so let's crack up the car's mass because it's only one. I try to estimate the mass based on the volume, but you have to assume a density, so it's not great. There we go. I can fly to the air. We can add impulses, actually. Let's add impulses. 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 There's something funny here. We must get ready for it. That's true, yeah, you're right. So the character system... <laughs> so I, I am working on the character system too, so we'll have to do that. But yeah, let's make a bad car. Let's make a full copy of this car, so it's not an instance. So we can make changes. Let's make a full copy of the car. Actually, we'll make a copy of its cape. Uh, it's a full copy of a cape. So that's another thing that's really important, is copy always works as you expect. So if you constrain things together, um, that's another thing I can get into too, is these things called units. Units are these like basic objects, that, uh, like these atomic units that you can use to build higher order objects. I think of them as like molecules. So if we build like a unit like this, and then we, we, let's say we attach two ropes to these things here. Uh, now we can make copies of this unit. Oh, but I'm making full copies, sorry. Let's make instance copies. Uh, now we, all we have to do is modify one instance and they all modify automatically. It's super sweet. So you can very quickly build objects and make changes and affect all of them really quickly. Um, so it's a very useful way of building high order objects and, and building things. And again, this is like a really Spartan world. It's not a very exciting thing. But, you know, you, and, and I'll have a demo set up. Yeah. Oh, that's a really massive I guess that's too much mass. I can make this sphere a little bit more massive. Now this sphere is going to take some care of some pieces here. Let's make it really massive. Oh, it's too massive now for the control. Sorry. It's fine. Oops. Uh, lost its mass. So I undid that. We must get ready for it. Anyway, so um, yeah, I'm only scratching the surface of the things we can do too. Um, we all know the atomic Some of the things with lots get complicated with paths and stuff. Um, but I, I won't get into that. We must get ready for it. Just as we are ready for many other dangers. And so yeah, that also the triggers are fine. So we have some prefab triggers here. So we have like a booster trigger. For instance, where some code is pre-written here. We can see the code for this is really simple. 
You know, it's just like take your, your body that goes in, figure out its direction, uh, apply some additional magnitude to its, to its to its direction, and then apply that linear velocity. So it kind of makes it go faster when it goes through. You kind of look at its direction, apply an additional force to the direction. Of the so if we make an object go through here now, it gets a little bit of a boost. And we can like you know, instance these things, we can stack them, make a super boost. Oops. I don't know where that went. So if we, if we put like an emitter in front of there, we must get ready for some crazy objects into it. We all know that it's not a problem. Yeah, it's very dangerous. We must get ready for it. Just as we are ready for many of the things around us all the time. Alright, right, sorry. I will try to wrap up here. We must get ready for it. Just as we are ready for many other dangers that are around us all the time. We all know the atomic bomb is very dangerous. Flying up here. So anyways, it's pretty easy to set up script and make it work. And again you can you can embed script into lots, so you can build lots that have high order systems and, and Oh, our, uh, the superhero car. We, I forgot we were doing that. <laughs> Sorry, I, I get easily distracted. Uh, ooh, let's, let's go figure out what that does. All right, let's see what, what's going on with my cars here. Uh, so those two are dead, apparently. They're, like, they're gone. This clock's not doing anything. Not sure what this thing's doing here. Um, um, where, what happened to them? We may have lost them. Oh, really? Oh, here they are. So one of these is the caked one. Where's the bad guy one? I should have named them. So naming things is really important. Other dangers that are around us all. Let's just make a have, okay. Let's just make a full copy of this car and let's cape. Um, and so to this one here, let's see if we can change its materials. Um, drag and drop it here. There we go. This will be the maybe the bad car. Um, let's add some. Uh, it's black. The black is the bad guy, and the white is the good guy. With the generic like TV movie color scheme. Actually, we'll make it. Different color. Let's make it. We'll make it super bright. Actually, let's do that. We'll make it like glow, super red or something. Pink. Pink is good color. There we go. It's so bright that it overexposes the scene here. <laughs> that's the bad car. We all know you. Now we can add some control system and smash it. Maybe used against us. So there's a vehicle system in it too. Um, it, it's something I'm kind of finishing up. Um, so we, we can make cars and the thing too actually work. Um, we all know the atomic bombs are very dangerous. They may be used against us. But maybe for now, we're just asking for that are around us all the time. We all know the atomic bomb is very dangerous. It may be used against us. We must get ready for it. Just as we are ready for many other dangers that are around us all the time. This thing is going to keep trying to we eject it from the atomic bomb. We're going to select it and we'll really crank up its force. It may be used against us. They must get ready for it. Yeah, that was too much of a force there. Sorry. Yikes. Impulse is too strong. Yeah, that's true. Its cape is not. Uh, 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 let, me, let me adjust the impulse area. That's a really strong impulse. All right, 77. Attack. There we, we go. All know the I think it'll kind of erratically move. Um, may be used against us. We must get ready good. for it. So that's the bad car, I guess. Like, it, something's really wrong with it. All the time. Uh, it's, actually, it's actually a pity thing more than a bad car. Um, so may be used against us. One, yeah. We must get ready for it. Just as we are ready for many other dangers that are around us all the time. That's, that's weird. We all know the atomic bomb yeah. is very dangerous. We must get ready for it. Just as we are ready for many other dangers around us all the time. We all know the atomic bomb is very dangerous. Ooh, the may be used against us. We must get ready for it. Just as we are ready for anyway, so anyway, so there's all sorts of things we can do here. Um, we, we can create you know, state machines and create a pulse so you can create some script that can query the state of the environment to make changes. I'm adding Twitter support right now to be able to query Twitter and, and be able to use visualization inside the, the scene from some data point. So again, using data visualization is really important too to, to be able to actually do, to have a tool like this that just kind of lets you explore something. Um, to me, it's kind of the ideal, it's the tool I set out to build um, when I start working on this. Um, 
and hopefully I've given you a little bit of a sense of something stupid to do with it. I mean, this is like dumb, right? <laughs> But you know, I can set up I can set up some demos um, where I've, I set up things more ornately. A music video that you experience using virtual reality, uh, this butterfly, and it's set to a music video. Uh, you should check that out. I spent a lot, like a lot more time on it, about a week on it, so it's a lot more ornate. It tells a story. Um, but again, with a little bit of with a little bit of imagination, you can kind of do kind of interesting things. And I think we're I'm only scratching the surface of some of the things you can do. Um, um, and there's a lot of things that I think are, are just fun to explore that you, know, you might not think of doing. And, and, and that's really the spirit of it. And that's kind of the spirit of, of why I set out to make it. So um, the other big thing I, I want to mention is that I would like to, I'm going to be releasing a beta version very soon. So if anybody's interested, um, initially it's for Windows only. So um, if people out there have like a nice video cards with Windows, um, please sign up for beta. Uh, and I would be super ecstatic to get feedback and, and see what other people are using it for. And, and, to see what, what kind of things other people make with it. Um, because, I mean, you know, I have an idea of what the kind of things I like to make, but the fun part is when people make something that you don't expect. You know, it's just like, whoa, that's, just, that's, that's an exciting part to me. So um, please uh, sign up for the beta. And when, it, when, a, a beta is, when I release the beta in about a month, I will send out an email. Um, and I would, I would be ecstatic if, if people check it out. How do we sign up? What's that? How do we sign up? Is uh, that on the site? Yeah, it is. There should be a Google form for that. Um, so um, yeah, and I'll promise. Privacy policy is in place, or there no spamming or anything like that. Um, yeah. Just a quick thing. Sure. What, what type of hardware do we need for this? Because it, this looks pretty intense. Yeah, it, it is, uh, and I think part of the reason why is that some like, uh, you know, when you enable depth of field and fog and this and that, uh, it does get kind of crazy. You, it does scale. So I'm running a really nice modern video card, but it'll run on any. I've, I've, I've been developing it over many years, so it's like it ran fine even three or four years ago on those. And it has, you can select the level of detail. There's an options menu that lets us control that stuff, so we can we can adjust some things. And you can set up levels of details and stuff like that to, uh, to set things up. So you can scale things down. Um, that's important, absolutely. And you can nest things, like lots. So streaming lots, you can also nest them. So you can have lots that trigger <coughs> as you move through space to stream in other subregions and stuff. So you can kind of control a lot of that stuff to, to build larger spaces like cities and stuff. It does. So that's that's a really complicated problem, uh, especially when you're doing real time. Because in physics, you have non-deterministic things and stuff like that. It's tricky sometimes to revert those things back. So I mean, there are some tricks you can kind of do. You can kind of store the state initially and then hit play, and then you can kind of go back to an initial state. Um, but yeah, there is an undo uh, buffer. Uh, but it works right now with a subset of static things that you make changes. So properties will undo very easily. Creating and destroying objects, those will undo. But if if an object gets created within the real-time environment, like let's say you have a script that clones an object within the space, those objects will get destroyed automatically when you hit stop. So there's a management for objects that are dynamically created versus not. And so in that sense, those aren't really undone. Entropy, when it's reset to time zero, those things are destroyed because it's the only way to really manage that, that kind of, it gets really complicated. And I haven't figured out everything quite yet. So it's a, it's a really good question. But does it like record everything so you can reset time to zero, replay everything? So, like tweak something so, it so this goes is a little faster. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So um, one, uh, this is the other big thing for lots. So lots, basically, let me let me just show you a, a better example of how lots work here, um, which is exactly this this point here. Because you're right, you're going to build like a Jenga stack, right, and knock over the Jenga stack, and now like what I have to do? I have to reset every time they play. Like it's so annoying. So yeah, the, the whole point here is is lots. Not only can they be streamed off the internet and stuff, they're also how you store state. So let's say we create a Jenga stack here. Um, so let's create. Let's make this movable here. Instances by default, but since I was playing with this, it wasn't. All right, make, make these movable. Okay, so yeah, your so your your question is, oh no, I did this, and I'm like ah, oh, like this is so annoying, I have to reset because it's stored in a lot. I can just unload that lot and reload it, and it, it gets restored. So all state inside a lot can get restored to time zero. But the actual gesture where you knock it over, did that get stored? No, it's not in this case. You can actually keyframe that information if you want and store that, so you can replay it back perfectly. Um, you just hold on the record button here, and it will start to record the state. And then you can create key tracks for all of them, and then you can actually record that. So you could do that if you wanted to. If you had a nice physics simulation that you just you enjoyed how that fell or whatever, you can completely so inc if record you that. To make it fall a teeny bit harder, would you just have to redo it, or can you just type in the number? Yeah, you could do that. You could you could write some script that would just say, okay, inject this impulse, in uh, and then you could, it would it would still be non-deterministic, I, I think, because of. Um, in fact, the floating point precision issues and stuff like that, I don't, I don't, it doesn't always play back the same way. And also, if the frame rate changes, I, I tend to 
I will add more time steps to interpolate the physics a little bit more accurately if there's higher frame rates so it's smoother. And so that means it's not really deterministic because if you have a lower frame rate, it's approximating those curves less, less precisely. But lots are really the way you manage entropy in the system. You know, you create lots and you can reset to a time zero by resetting those lots. Um, whereas the traditional way of doing this, like Unity and stuff, I think you hit play and it restores everything, then you destroy that instance and you restore the scene from time zero to the time you hit play. Um, in this case, because I like the real-time playground thing, it's up to you to manage those subspaces, like lots, to be able to manage like when things can be set or not. And I think that's, that's, that's the spirit of the program. Um, the idea of resetting to a time zero state and then hitting play and then hitting stop and then destroying that instance, to me, it kind of loses that playground-y aspect. So, but it is a good question, though. It's, it's something I'm always thinking about because it's all about like the usability and, the, and what actually people end up doing with it. But, but, thanks. Yep. So it's all a custom engine. Um, I wrote it um, in C++. Um, so I, I've been working on engines for a really long time. Um, so for me, it's, it's always just been kind of an interest of mine. Um, so yeah, there's a, a, I'd love to talk about the technology behind it. It's, it's really cool, there's like components in the root object system. I try to mimic kind of the, the idea of the universe, so there's like a universe at the root, and then you have objects that kind of represent the, you have entities that are kind of like the relationship between like how objects interact, like the math behind like how, molecules in reactors, you know, like atoms in the reactor, and then like units are kind of like molecules that like, store a higher order state. I mean it's like a 40 way of saying like a important rate of the right? So with the other uh, object. like, so let's say we, uh, I can show you what a ULOP is for like one of my demos. This is the role with the demo. It runs in this little player, but you can export the, as an executable, yep, and it just, it tra takes all the stuff it actually needs, and it, but it's essentially symmetry. In fact, if you rename executable symmetry.exe, it will actually load the editor, so it's kind of weird. It's like, they're all kind of one thing. And the whole thing is like 12 megs. It's like, it's very small, like 12 megabytes. The whole entire engine, I mean, just fits in 12 megs, so it's, it's, really, it's pretty small. Um, so it's lightweight too. Uh, for the music visualization stuff, instead of having it like overlay a uh, yep. like, uh, screen or something, can you attach control? data? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, sorry. Can, it, can you have it instead control parameters of 3D objects? Absolutely. So you can uh, get it, you have a signal, and then you can attach any one of those properties you see. You can attach a signal controller, and one of its sources would be an audio signal. Mm -hmm. And so in the case of a waveform, if you do a waveform, you can, it'll just give you that instantaneous value that's passing at the exact moment of playback plus or minus whatever the latency of the audio system is. Um, and you can then attach that to some sort of value in the space. Um, yep. Yep. No, it's, it's a Lua. It's based on Lua. Um, so Lua, again, I know Jim is big on this too. Uh, Lua is like this really slick, like it's almost like Java, um, super simple, uh, JavaScript. Um, and it's, it's very flexible, and there's a, I've tried to document it really carefully via the, so it's really easy to get into too. Um, there's a nice, just the documentation for it is really straightforward, scripting reference, um, that'll get you started right away, and you can access, see how average, uh, objects work, and, and see how the, the member functions are, so it should be really quick to get into, and Lua, I think, is a really intuitive language um, to use. The only thing that annoys me about it is that to call it a member function, you have to use a colon instead of a, a, a period, so I'm gonna drive crazy with that. So they're used to saying object dot something, you have to remember the colon to call a function. But properties are actually using a period. Well, who knows? Any other questions? Yeah. So for importation, it has a plugin system. So to bring in assets. So right now I have a Colada plugin for it, which is what we're using for the parts and stuff like that, which are Colada files. 
Um, with, yeah, so plugins, you know, the funny thing about writing plugins is that, you know, you're, you're offloading the performance to the plugin writer, and so uh, having that work in any real-time uh, situation is like, it makes me nervous to let that third parties write things that could affect the performance. I like to be able to control that so as carefully as possible, but for static things like editor stuff, like bringing things in and stuff, I think it's important to allow for also to have systems and stuff. So yeah, there's a plugin system, but it's not, it's not quite the real-time version, it's just for importing and things like that. 